Hey everybody, my name's Scott and I have about 20 years of drifting experience. Uh, my name is Mike. I'm very new to drifting, don't have very much seat time at all, um, but the passion is there and my goal is to get better. Between his knowledge and expertise and the recipe of parts we threw at the car, the goal is to make a simple seat time build that I can actually learn in. Yep, so this is our video on the build and we hope you enjoy and take some value from it because there's two completely different perspectives as we learn about this car and turn it into a drifting machine. Um, so if you've seen the car the way we got it, the car was in very rough shape. absolutely hated this car the moment that we started tearing into it. Every single page that we turned over it exposed another problem from the suspension to the engine to the wiring to the interior all the little bits on the car that were broken. And every panel on the car had three or more dents. It was just rough. It was really bad. But I think that was the biggest challenge was just starting with a platform that was so beat up. Um, but we had the vision. We knew what we could get it to. It was just a matter of finding the time and the resources to get it from the clapped out version we got it to what you see today. <laughs> I've had a couple track days, um, but not very much skill development, even though I've had some seat time. Um, so that was kind of the premise with this car, was to build something that was functional and reliable to get seat time without having to repair the car every track day. It's supposed to be simple, but efficient. Even though I've never messed with the Z chassis, um, there are a handful of brands that we use on the S chassis that we run and even that I've used on the Corvette. It's products that we know will work. But yeah, this car was trashed and I'm so glad that we have completed the project so that it can now be a fun and reasonable drift car that can provide seat time experience. Suspension in a low power car is the go-to. Having the adjustability that you need to set your alignment properly is very important. So that's why we went with um, adjustable upper front arms and all the rear arms from ISR. They've been around for a long time. They're easily adjustable. They're ready to ship pretty much all of the time. So that was a no-brainer there. As far as the lower control arm and the angle kit, if you will, we went Park Shop Max. I've seen at events, even though we just built this Z, I've seen so many Zs running this kit and it works. The factory bushings were extremely blown out on this and the, the design of the lower arm is, when the bushings are blown out, it absolutely compromises your alignment. So. Again, went with Part Shop Max for the angle kit and the lower control arm kit. Of course, we had to run BC coilovers. Uh, they're fully adjustable. They offer a lot of different varieties of spring rates and everything else. Usually, whenever I transition, I'm often fighting the steering wheel and trying to throttle modulate to get the car to where I want it to be. But with the suspension the way we have it now, I don't really have to fight for it. The car just wants to do it. It puts the car where I think it needs to be without very much effort. And as someone who wants to get better um, and just have like a seat time car, that's exactly what I expect it to do. And it is more than delivering that. The exhaust on this thing was ragged out. As Mike stated, the car was an absolute piece of junk when we got it. We got this car for sub $3,000. Everything on this car was ragged out, destroyed, ripped, torn, broken, poorly, modified, whatever you want to say, it was everything. So immediately we threw all of the ISR exhaust on it. We left the header stock just because they're kind of annoying to replace. You can go online and find cheaper, no-name stuff all day, but it's not gonna fit as well. It's not gonna be as high of quality components. We know when we put ISR exhaust on, 
that stuff is just, it's gonna work. As far as the hydraulic components, we want Chase Bays. We've got their hydraulic e-brake. It's an inline system, which is great. It works fine. I know a lot of people are really heavy on having an independent hydraulic system for their uh, hydro e-brake. I get why it works. And for us on this car, it was more of like a budget thing. And I've run inline system on our other cars with no problems. So, um, so far it's working great. We've also got all the brake lines on this car from Chase Bay's power steering line as well. Basically all of their hydraulic lines that they offer, we're running on this car. It cleans things up, it simplifies the system, and with a hydro, we just need it. A factory e-brake doesn't work well in drifting, so for this car, it uses a shoe system for the parking brake, and that's just not gonna be efficient enough, so we have the hydraulic e-brake because we need it, especially in the courses like we're gonna drive. Uh, at the Drift Mansion specifically, that's where this car is built with intention of driving. Not that we expect any issues out of the car, but people don't plan for mistakes, right? So if we have an issue, we can pull the logs from our Link ECU and pinpoint exactly where the problem is because this car has plenty of sensors on it. And if we don't know what those sensors are reading, then we can't figure out the problem. We have to go about it the old school way. Well, when it's a track day, you only have X amount of hours on track. So we want to take our time at the track and utilize it on the track. We're not trying to go to the track and be under the car and testing things and trying to re repair the wrong part when we know all we have to do is plug the computer in, pull the log, review stuff. Even if it's something we can't read, we can reach out to Link ECU staff. They're always on call and we can get an answer and find the solution to our problem immediately. I know Mike says he doesn't want more power, but you know, maybe he uh, drives this thing for a couple of years and wants to throw some nitrous on it. Maybe he wants to throw a turbo kit on it. Maybe we even want to change completely to a different uh, engine platform. That Link ECU is going to allow us the ability to still run management on a different engine. As far as aesthetics, we went with the KBD kit. No brainer. This car looked like a piece of junk when we got it. Stuff was falling off of it holes in it, wrong parts on it. The rear bumper was crudely bondoed on. So the KBD kit was a no-brainer. It's flexible, it's cheap as far as body kits go, and it looks great. It has pretty much an OEM fit, and outside of like the backside bracketry that would come on OEM bumpers, it's OEM fit. And so with that front bumper from KBD, we noticed Obviously, again, it's a lot of weight, so if you're just mounting it on the top, it kind of droops, it hangs, right? So we wanted to secure it, and we thought, okay, we're gonna have to like build our own system. No big deal. GK Tech makes a skid pad with a front bumper support. So not only are we now protecting our oil pan, which is extremely important, um, GK Tech skid pad has the front bumper support, which is it's basically just a laser cut piece of aluminum, but yeah, you could spend a day in the garage making it or you could just buy theirs and immediately support the front bumper. So we're protecting the oil pan, we're supporting the bumper, uh, which is protecting it as well. Another part that we bought from GK Tech is their swirl pod kit, which is very important. We're doing a lot of high revving. We knew the car was gonna be beat on, so we knew that the excessive heat temperatures were something that we needed to get under control before we let them get out of hand. So of course we went with the Mishimoto. We got the full cooling package on here. Everything stays nice and cool. No, this car doesn't make a million horsepower, but we want to use it over and over and over again and we don't want to damage it in that process. So we've got the cooling system and the oil system now safeguarded by adding oversized coolers to it so that we can hopefully get as many laps as possible back to back. Tires and wheels, kind of no brainer for us. We've been running Kansai wheels now for a handful of years great success rate. They obviously look fantastic. They're highly invested in the drifting community. They show a lot of love for drifting. We opted for a set of tandems in hyper silver. 
the curvature of those wheels really match the curvature of the Z chassis. So it, it looks great. I, it was an easy choice there. As far as the tires go, we're running Acceler 651 Sports. We run those on all the cars. We keep a heavy stock of them at the shop because we like the consistency of the tire. It's sticky when you need it. It also can be loose if we air them up, but they also burn really evenly, and that's important. Again, easy choice when it came to the 350Z. With aesthetics, we chose to throw a low glow underglow kit on the car. From what I understand, they're more in like the stance car show side of things, but the underglow kit is uncomparable. It installs very easily, and there's so many different variations in the light that you can change. Um, and obviously, this car looks fantastic with it. We had our friends at Fleet Graphics send us this livery. Um, it really kind of tied the car in together very well. We, we love the color by itself, but adding the vinyl to it just really makes it pop. The future for this car, I really don't want to change much on it. Like from the start, we built it with a certain goal in mind and we, we pretty much got there already. So I don't want to get any deeper in the build. I really don't want to make things complicated. The whole point was to keep this simple and not make it full blown race car. That way it's reliable and that way I get the seat time that I need. So I say from here, that's really my only goal is just to get better and use this car to do so. I think it goes without saying, I do got to mention two very important people, and that is my wife and Scott's wife. Um, Scott and I have spent a lot of time on this car, many late nights, Saturdays and Sundays were spent on this car, and our wives are totally understanding and supportive of that. So I think that's a very meaningful point of this car, is all the support from the companies in the automotive industry, all of our friends, but then our loved ones support it too. The ones that aren't even interested in drifting still see how passionate we are and they support it and that, that means everything to me.